So this is a main engine piston. Let's see the engine room team work in action. Today the engine room team will work hard to remove a piston due to high scavenge box temperatures. Before we did a scavenge box cleaning and piston inspection from inside the scavenge air chamber. And we found out that one piston had broken piston rings. Together, let's have a basic review on why we urgently have to do this job. While on watch, we noticed one scavenge air box temperature was slowly getting higher, until on one watch, it went finally an alarm for high temperature. Luckily, upon arriving at port, we had some time until the next cargo discharge. So we carried out a scavenge air box cleaning and inspection. If we review our previous videos, the scavenge air receiver is where our compressed turbocharger intake will be stored for when the piston is in its intake or admission and compression stroke. This air enters through the cylinder ports and that's where we're inspecting. As the piston goes up, the port is sealed and the air is further compressed due to the exhaust valve being closed. This upper seal is achieved due to mostly the piston rings, but more on that later. Once it is at top dead center with max compression pressure, then the fuel injection pump due to its timing will pump high pressure fuel to the fuel injectors, where a combustion will then happen causing exhaust gases to expand. If you would like a full technical explanation on the two-stroke diesel cycle, please view our previous two-stroke diesel cycle video for more information. However, what's important for this video is that the combustion gases, if these piston rings are broken, will pass into the scavenge air box. And if there's lots of soot accumulated, it can cause a fire. Therefore, the engine team is gonna get to work to change those piston rings. A lot of these following clips were rushed in order to not get in the way of working. So please keep that in mind. And as always, before carrying out any job, review the manual to safely isolate the engine by air, water, fuel, and the turning gear before working on this. And since we're gonna be removing the exhaust valve, cylinder head, and piston, we need to shut off the lube oil pumps for the engine. Now finally, let's get to the fun part. As usual, preparation is key with tools and cleaning, as you can see here. Here, we're starting to disassemble the flange from the exhaust valve to the exhaust manifold. And afterwards, we will disconnect the fuel injection lines from the fuel injection pump to the fuel injectors. Meanwhile, someone is already opening the crankcase doors here we can see the connecting rod, the crosshead, and the pisting rod, all the way up to the stuffing box. Upstairs, the crane is now ready to lift up the very heavy parts, which can weigh up to hundreds of kilos. For example, this oil line for the exhaust valve. Smaller oil lines we remove manually like you can see me doing here. Very hard to reach places require nimble and thin people. 
like me. Finally, you can see the sharks of the engine room checking everything out to make sure it's all okay and safe. And then we can start to hook up a hydraulic jack to start to remove the cylinder head nuts. This pneumatic hydraulic jack will push the cylinder head down so we can easily remove these nuts. With all of them removed, we can now install a shackle and start to pull out the exhaust valve and cylinder head. Initial inspection is crucial to see any underlying issues. As you can see, the shark is carefully reviewing before setting the cylinder head down on some supports. With the cylinder head and exhaust valve out, we can finally see inside the cylinder liner with the intake ports. Soon we will go inside the cylinder liner and take measurements with an internal micrometer. This will inform us if there's any internal wear going on inside. Meanwhile downstairs, another team is getting ready to remove the bolts connecting the piston rod and the stuffing box seal. Everything is very oily, so extra caution is needed. The rest of the team is helping, moving the crosshead into position, using the turning gear. It's very hot in this place, oily and dark. The space is very cramped, so no claustrophobic people could be here. At this moment, maybe two to three hours have passed, and we're not even nearly done. But as you can see, the engine team is still full of power. Meanwhile, upstairs, cleaning and maintenance on the cylinder head is being carried out. Full teamwork is required to make sure we finish on time. The team downstairs is now attaching the hydraulic pneumatic jack to remove the crosshead piston rod nuts. This is a good experience for any new engineer. After a while, you can even see the camera is starting to get oily. Now, with the piston on top dead center, we can attach the special tool to pull out the piston from its crown. The whole team is excited to see the piston come out. After removing some of the cylinder head studs, we make way to receive the piston with the piston rod. We set up the special piston support and lower it gently with the crane on the top. Now approximately four hours should have surely passed. And now here we can see the seized piston rings, as well as finding some cracked rings. These were the ones that were causing the blow-by of the exhaust gases. We later discovered that the breakage was due to poor lubricating oil inside the cylinder. Here you can see that the new piston rings come in sets. Like previously mentioned, they seal the gases inside the cylinder in order to keep maximum compression and also so that the combustion gases don't return to the scavenger box. These gaps in the rings, when placed in 90 degree conjunctions, create a labyrinth to avoid blow-by and for their elasticity, allowing them to expand and contract due to the changing temperatures inside the cylinder. With this special tool called a ring expander, we can attach it on the gap and slide the rings inside the grooves. We also measure the piston crown with this special tool to measure any burning 
and we see if the crown is still within usable tolerance range. As you can see, the cadet here is taking lots of notes of everything. Finally, with the new rings installed and all the measurements taken, we have all the data we need to complete this emergency maintenance. We can now start to hook up this piston to put it back. A tired team, but this job was done to keep us all sailing safe. Under the guidance of the sharks, we start to slowly install everything back. I hope you enjoyed another story at sea. Success and nothing else. Till next time, seafarer.